Hi everyone, and welcome back to part 12 in this series of creating scripted REST APIs in ServiceNow. In previous videos in this series, we've talked about what a scripted REST API is, and we've gone ahead and created our very first scripted REST API with a total of five resources for retrieving records, for creating new records, as well as deleting records. So if you've come this far, congratulations on creating your first version of your API. However, just remember, it is just that, a first version. No doubt you'll want to make enhancements to that API in the future. But at the same time, you want to allow current applications and clients that are using what you've already developed to continue doing that. You don't want to break those current connections. And this is where versioning comes into play. So in this video, we are going to go ahead and create a new version and make a very small but yet very significant change to our API. Let's have a look at our API as it currently exists, in particular the get vehicles resource. That resource defines five query parameters, but all of those query parameters default to the equals operator. In other words, if we put in a model, a year, a city, the way that we've developed the script in our API for this resource means that we're looking for a model that is equal to whatever we put in here, that is equal to the year and so forth. So there's no possibility here to say uh, if the year of the vehicle is more than or later than 2005 or if the model is this model or this other model or if the model contains a certain string so if i put in xc90 here it means it's equal to xc90 i can't actually put in something like this to say is it this model or this other model so let's make that small enhancement to our script so before we go ahead and do that, we'll actually need to enable versioning for our API. So if I come over to the enable versioning link here and click on it, that will enable versioning. Now, before I do that, pay attention to the resource path. Notice that there is no version identifier in any of those paths. Okay, but once I click on enable versioning, we're going to make version one the default. So we're actually going to create a version one here. If I click OK here, the system will save those new resources. Now, if we scroll down now and have a look at those resources once more, we will see that if there is a version identifier. See the version one right there? OK, that means that that is the default version, the only version at the moment. And when we do our testing later, we actually won't need to put in the V1 as the identifier because we'll actually define that this is the default in other words, if you don't put in a version identifier, the system will default to whatever version you've defined as the default. So now that we've done that, we'll go ahead and click on add new version. OK, we're going to not make this the default version. So in other words, the original version will still be the default and we're going to copy existing resources from version one. OK, so we don't need to start all over again. We can just copy what we have right now into the new version two and then make our changes. So we'll click OK. And once we do that and scroll down once more, now we can see we've got double the amount of resources, a resource for each of the ones that we defined already for version one, but the same ones now for version two. So if we come down to our version two for get vehicles and open that, we're going to make a small change to this script here. So if we scroll down to where we make the glide record query here, I'm going to place one line of code here with these five lines, whereby the first four lines are simply comments. But if you have a look at line 36 here, writing the query here to be exactly the same as the model that we've specified in the query parameter. So we're not actually doing anything here. We're not having defining an operator here. So with the other ones, we actually haven't defined an operator. But if you do that, then the system will just default to equals. OK, so if the make is equal to whatever, if the year is equal to that. But for the model, we've made it a little bit different. OK, so we're actually going to accept an encoded query here. And we'll take a look at an example in just a moment. OK, but first of all, I'm going to save that record. And if we come back to our vehicles table here and just put in a filter, such as where the model contains the string XC, so that could be the XC60 model, the XC90, the XC40, whatever you like. Now, some of you may know this already, but if you actually come to the filter in ServiceNow and right click on it, you can actually copy that encoded query. So that's what the system will accept in that query parameter. Okay, so if I just paste it here just to show you what it looks like, 
you can see where the model is like XE, okay, or contains XE. All right, so if we come now to our REST API Explorer and just refresh the page here, and then come along and select our API once more, and this time we'll need to accept the API version as version two. So will we take advantage of the new script or the new version of a script that we've just defined? We'll go to get vehicles, and then I'll just pop that encoded query straight into the model field here. Okay, so we're not looking for a model that is equal to model like XC. This will be accepted and translated as, as is, as an encoded query. So if we go ahead and send that, we get a 200 response back, and then we get those three records that we just saw in the list. So now we're allowing the query to be a little bit more flexible. We're not saying, okay, we only accept equal operators here. You can define your own encoded query here and we'll accept that. Okay, let's do one more quick test. Let's come back to our list here. And this time I'm gonna modify the query here to say where the model is one of XE90 or XE70. Okay, run that, we get the same records back. I'll copy that query to the clipboard and just show you what it looks like. And this time we'll do our test in Postman. So before we go ahead and do the test, on the left-hand side, I've actually created a new folder called V2 and I've just copied all the requests over to this new folder. Okay, so this is something that you can do in Postman. It allows you to really take control and organize your testing efforts here. Our V1 requests are in the V1 folder and our V2 ones are in V2. Now, before we go ahead and test the new version, let's see if the old version still works. So let's go to get vehicles here. I'm not gonna make any changes to this whatsoever. This is the same test that we ran in an earlier video. i just click on send and we get the response back. That works, okay? Notice also in the request URI that the version number is not defined there. And because we've said that version one is the default, if you don't specify a version number, then that's what the system will use. All right, let's go ahead now and go to V2. Now I'm going to change this parameter here to model and then put in that encoded query that we saw before and then click on send. Now, before I do, will this work? What do you think? Let's click on it and find out. Send. Hmm, no records found, failure. Why is that? Well, just take a look at the URI here, okay? Where model is equal to model in XC90, XC70. So we're actually looking for a model that is that model number and that doesn't really look right. If you look at the URI as well, you also notice that there's no version number there. So what I haven't done yet is updated that URI to include the V2, the version two, okay? We need to do that to define or to tell the system, we wanna use the V2 version of this API. Because if we don't do that, we're just gonna use the default, which is version one. So what we'll do here is just come back to our version two get vehicles and I'll just copy that resource path here and then come back over to Postman and then just paste that in. And now we'll come back to our query parameters and put in the model again and that query once more and we'll click on send. And we get records back. Actually, I've just noticed that I've put in XC60 instead of XC70. So this is why we only get two records back. So if we just quickly change that to 70, try it again, we get those three, those same three records back. So what we would need to do then for all the requests that I've got saved now in my version two folder, I'll need to go ahead and then just update the URIs for each of them respectively to include V2 so that we make it explicitly known to the server that we wanna use the version two of that API. So that's how versioning of ServiceNow APIs works. It allows us to do two things. First, create newer versions of our API and allow further developments and enhancements to take place and allow clients and applications to take advantage of those new features, while at the same time too, allow other clients and applications who wanna to continue to use their existing version to do that. So in other words, we're making developments in our API without breaking existing connections. We can of course turn off those older versions whenever we like. So. We've actually finished developing our scripted REST API. However, there is one big problem with it. Do you know what that problem is? Security. Our API is a long way off from being secure. 
So in the next six videos in this series, we're going to take a close look at various platform features that will allow us to secure our API. So I strongly recommend that you take a look at those videos.